Okay, welcome back to another Smart Architect tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at DWF in Revit. So let's get started with this. I want to make some comparisons to the PDF, and I covered creating PDFs in a past video. But we're going to start back up here at the R or the file, whatever you want to call this button. And we're just going to come down here on the print menu. And if we come down here to print, this is where the PDF was found. For creating a DWF, we're going to use the export command. So you'll come up here to export, and you'll see right here, we see DWF slash DWFX. And you'll see right now, it's actually grayed out. Now, right now, I'm actually here in the sheet. So the first thing I want to do is let's just get into a view. So you see on this sheet, I actually have the 3D view northwest view axon I'm going to find that actual view first and now that I have that view I'm going to open that up so you'll see we're pretty much looking at the same view it's just placed on the sheet there and we'll come back up here to file export and now you'll see it's bold which means that we can in fact create a DWF for whatever reason in Revit in order to create your DWF you'll need to be in a view other than a sheet to get the DWF menu to pop up and get started with this command. So let's go ahead and start the DWF. All right. Now it'll bring us to this menu. And you'll see we can, it gives us a couple options here in that export menu. We have our current view and sheet um, only. We can create, if we have a sheet set that's currently available, or we can actually create a new sheet set. So there's sheet set one, or we can build our own. So if I click over here, we can actually do a new sheet set. We're not going to bother with it. If you wanted to set up a list of sheets or a list of views to continually come back in DWF, you can save some time by setting up a sheet here. However, we're just going to, I just wanted to make some comparisons between the DWF and the PDF. So let's go ahead and click next here. And we're going to just do a DWF and I'm going to save this out on my desktop and let's just let's click OK here. Now I'm going to take a second and open up this DWF. I just want to to show you what we just created here. And you see Revit is actually opening up the Autodesk design review program. Now here in the design review program, I want to show you some of the differences. So you'll see up here on the home tab, I can actually look at this with the edges on only we have a couple different options and I just like to look at it with the shaded with the edges so that I kind of get some definition to the geometries that we have in our model. Well, it's pretty much a 3D PDF. You see that I still have my view steering cube up here. And I can rotate my model. I can zoom in and zoom out of the model and take a look at it as though I'm in Revit. So this is actually a great tool to be used. And I'm going to cover the Autodesk Design Review markup tools in a different video, uh, not to take up too much time here. But this is how you create. And I'm going to compare that. Let me open up very quickly for you. Very quickly, I want to open up the PDF. And you'll see with PDF, I'm kind of locked into this view. This is a very, you know, universally used format for exporting drawings for markups and so forth. However, I can't view the model from a different view and take a look at anything other than the view exported. So if you were going to, if I was going to want them to be able to look at this scheme uh, from a different angle, at the axon, I'd actually have to create another PDF and export that, print that PDF for them as well. Whereas with the DWF, we have the benefit of really viewing the model as is. So the last thing I want to show you while we're still here taking a look at this DWF, and I'm holding down my cursor so that I can kind of pan to bring the 3D view into the view range. Well, the other action that we're able to take advantage of from Revit that I wanted to point out in this video, uh, which can prove to be useful 
in your DWF is you'll see if I actually hover over any of the surfaces, my roofs here, I'm going to select this roof. And if I still want to right click, I can hide the roof if I wanted to take a look inside the structure. So I'll hide the roofs on both of these structures or even the pavilion that I modeled here. And you can kind of look down in the model. If I wanted to pull away the faces, I can do that as well. And so I can kind of begin to really look into the model in the DWF um, that we're displaying here in the design review software. So there's quite a bit of functionality in this free program. I'm going to go through how to download it and use the markup tools in another video. But over here, I want to also point out now that we've kind of hid some of the roofs on our structures and one of the walls, how do I get that information back? It works very similar. You'll see all of my model elements are over here on this listing. So now that we've hit in the roofs, if you see right here, I still have the roof in here on the connector element. And that's the roof that we see the bold. It's still showing up, but these are ghosted kind of icons in front of these basic roofs. If I right click on any one of these and uncheck the hid, you'll see I can bring each one of them back. So it's really essentially like having the model. You're exporting that model view and we can view it in any dimension that we'd like to. We can take a look at it right now. We're looking at it from top left. We can rotate the thing and we have quite a bit of flexibility to be able to maneuver and get the view that we want here in the DWF. And you'll see as I dig into the markup tools, just how much valuable this, this entire program can be for, uh, for coordination, which I'm sure is how Autodesk intended it to be. So, I hope this video has been helpful for you and I hope that this will point out some of the differences between PDFing and DWFing. <laughs> and I hope that you'll use DWF to your advantage in the future. Thank you. And if you would please subscribe to the Smarter Architect YouTube channel if you haven't already as we will continually be bringing you new information that we hope will be helpful as you continue to build your knowledge of this Revit software.